This time what I'm going to attempt to do is derive the uh, radioactive decay equation. So in this equation what we've got is N which is the number of nuclei that we have at a particular point that we're measuring. Um, N0 is the number of nuclei we started off with. So um, on, before, we started, before we started timing that was the number of nuclei um, that under K nuclei that we had. Um, e is the exponential function, so that's just a function. Um, lambda is the probability that a particular nucleus will decay in a given time. Um, so if if you have if you have um, three nuclei that decay in a sample of a hundred thousand nuclei um, in a second, then the probability that a, that a nucleus will decay in a second is three in a hundred thousand. Um, and t is the point that we're measuring on. So what we're measuring is the number of undecaying nuclei in that sample at a given time. So this equation allows us to work out the number of nuclei that, that would occur, that would be um, at a given point, um, given that we know that, knew that the number of original undecaying nuclei in the sample. Okay, so to try and derive this, I need to start off with the original definition that I've just said, um, which is that of lambda. We're going to say that lambda is equal to the change in the number of nuclei over the number of nuclei we started off with divided by time. So, um, so actually what we're saying is that the, the loss in the number of nuclei over the number of nuclei we started off with is, uh, over a given time is a probability um, and the negative in, in, um, um, indicates a decrease. So if we started off with um, like I say three, nu um, three um, nuclei that have decayed in a sample of 100,000 a change in nuclei is going to be minus 3, so that's minus 3 over 100,000. The two negatives cancel out, so that's 3 in 100,000, and we're saying that delta t is going to be a second. So what we've ascertained is that the probability of nucleus decay is 3 in 100,000 over a second, and that's, that's where the definition of lambda comes from. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this equation as follows. So that's, that's just some basic algebra, like that. To get to this form, because what I want to do is I want to get an equation in terms of n. So I want to get rid of this delta n over delta t. And you'll notice that this is actually a derivative. So this this is the perfect form to put it in. So what I'm gonna I mean what actually what you can see is that this is a, a separable first order differential equation. So as with all separable first order differential equations, since I want to be getting n, I'm gonna start to separate the variable. So I'm gonna divide both sides by n. 1 over n delta n delta t is minus lambda. Uh, put my integral sign um, uh, over both sides. So I'm going to integrate with respect to t. And um, you'll notice on the left hand side the delta t's cancel each other out. So in fact, I'm integrating 1 over n with respect to n, which is equal to the integral of minus lambda with respect to t. Okay. Um, 1 over n delta n, we know, you know that the integral of um, 1 over something is going to be the natural log of it. So natural log of n is equal to minus lambda t because the integral of a constant, which in this case is lambda, is just going to be um, the variable that we're, that, that we're integrating with respect to. So that's t minus delta t minus lambda t, sorry. Um, and k is our constant of integration, which we have to put in there anyway. Um, well, I mean, the constant of integration isn't particularly useful, so we're going to have to find out a value for this k. Um, what we do know is that at time t, at time, at, at, um, at, sorry, at, well at time naught, t equals naught, the number of nuclei that we had was n naught, because n naught in the original equation here is the number of undecayed nuclei we started off with. Okay, so we know that at time t equals naught, the number of nuclei that we're going to have is going to be equal to n naught. Okay, so if I substitute um, n equals n naught into this equation, we get natural log of n naught is equal to minus lambda times zero because the time that we're, the time that this that n equals n naught is going to be zero plus k. The minus lambda t term because t is naught um, just disappears, so we actually end up with natural log of n naught is equal to k. Okay, so now we know what the value of k is. So we substitute it back into this original equation, so we know that k is equal to natural log of n naught, we end up with this. Natural log of n is equal to minus lambda t plus natural log of n naught. So that, 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 that's, that's fairly simple what we've done there. Um, since we've got these natural logs we can, we can get rid of them by 
raising the whole equation to, um, to base e. So I've raised the left hand side, e to the natural log m is equal to e to the minus lambda t plus natural log n naught. Um, and then what we can do is we can separate the right hand side using um, some power laws, e to the natural log n is equal to e to the minus lambda t e to the natural log of n naught. And you'll see that e to the natural log of n is just n because if you take because if you take the um, base e to the power of a natural log of something, you end up with what that natural log is. It's, it's just it's just um, doing a function to it, to its inverse function. It just disappears. So we end up with n on that side. And um, on on the other side, likewise, e to the power of natural log n naught is going to be n naught. So what we end up with is natural log of n is equal to n naught e to the minus lambda t. And actually, that's what we were trying to derive in the first place. So uh, I think that's the derivation pretty much done. Um, likewise, um, if if I made any mistakes on this video, just tell me because I don't want to be starting rubbish. So I uh, hope that's been useful in some way.